But before I do that, um, I definitely want to uh, introduce Nephew and talk a little bit about um, your experience and kind of you know who you are to the students. For those who do not know, um, Nephew is a Grammy Award winning producer, songwriter and composer who has worked with Michael Jackson, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, Justin Bieber, Doja Cat, Leslie Odom Jr. The list really goes on, Sia, um, among countless others. And uh, Nephew jumped into the tech world as well and created uh, the Apogee Hype Mic. It's the only USB mic that has a built-in analog adjustable compressor. He's born and raised in uh, Grover, North Carolina, um, multi-instrumentalist, also attended Berkeley, and uh, really went to LA and took, and took the world by storm, it sounds like. I'm so happy to have gotten to work with you personally, even though it, it was virtually on a couple of city music projects, and um, has a wonderful energy and is just a generous spirit. So we're very excited to have you here with us. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, I just want to introduce Nephew A.K. Theron. What's happening, y'all? You can come off the mic. You can say, hey, we're in the city hello, music hello, office hello, now. Hello. What's hello. 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 Yeah, it's nice to be in Boston. It's so, I forgot how beautiful and how nice it is to be here. Uh, and two, um, I said it earlier, um, I'm an energy guy, so I love to see faces. I love to see body energy, you know, so those who feel comfortable showing their faces is nice. Don't be shy, y'all. Yeah, don't be shy. It's just music. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. Hello. So I guess the first question I want to start off with is how did you get your start in music? I'm sure this is a question you get asked a lot, but, you know, how did you get your start in music? When did you kind of start figuring out who you are, were as an artist and your artist identity as a young person? Um, well, my start in music started quite early. Um, I started playing when I was around two years old. Um, just growing up in a family full of musicians and singers, you know, playing in a really cool church, you know, that was full of freedom. Um, I would say that was my initial start yep. of music. Um, your other question is where did I find myself as an artist happened later on in my career? Mm. Um, I actually went to Berkeley to be a composer because um, I was very fascinated with film scoring. But at that time, it's, they were just getting computers and it looked very intimidating. Wow. Intimidating. I was like, man, I didn't know it can music look like that. But anyway, answer the question. It was later on in my career. Um, I remember. This is after I signed, I signed a record deal mm -hmm. with Universal Republic. Okay, cool. They signed me for like $3 million. I didn't have no clue, <laughs> you know. Um, and the way that happened, I remember Monty Lippman was coming down. I was working with Babyface and Babyface Studio at the time, just producing and right. writing. And, you know, Nelly was there, Neo, and a bunch of people. And so Monty just saw how I was interacting with the artists. Mm -hmm. And um, and how old were you when this was happening? Uh, maybe 20, something. Young. Um, yeah, 20. <laughs> and I remember he just seen the energy and and he flew me to New York. And I thought he was flying me to New York to work with more of his artists. And this is Republic Records. And but he was like, no, um, I really loved your energy. I like how you interacted with the artists. And I want to give you a record deal. Mm. And I thought they were joking. I thought it was a big joke. But the attorney started getting involved and uh, they all flew to LA and I was at Glenwood Studios and that's where I signed my record deal. Wow. And I was like, oh, an artist? Like, like, what is it? Like, what do I supposed to do? Sing, right. rap? And I remember Monty said, look, I don't care what you do. Go in, go in somebody's backyard. Go in your backyard and do something that you love. Mm. He said, I don't care if one person buys it, but I think that was just a yeah taking off the mental pressure right right it's like you said go in the backyard and do something that you think you love and in that moment i remember 
I was trying to figure it out, like, do I rap? Do I sing? Mm -hmm. You know, what does my voice sound like? I never really heard my voice outside my head. Mm. You know, it became pretty intimidating. Then I remember getting behind the booth and these songwriters brought this song to me. And I remember when I got behind the booth, I tried to sing that song. And it was in that moment I found it, it was super difficult mm. because I couldn't emotionally connect mm. with that song. And I realized, so this is how artists feels behind the booth when they're trying to sing something they don't connect to. Mm. And that was a pretty <laughs> eye-opening awakening for me. And that was, that was the first layer. The second layer is, I was like, what am I going to write about? Like, who am I? Yeah. Then I remember, I said, I needed to get out of the studio. So I start going out with my friends, going to the beach and just living life. Living life. And as I live life, these melodies and songs and ideas start coming to my head about how I felt. Mm -hmm. And that's how my songs, I start to develop me as an artist, but also as a producer. I became a better producer because I know what it felt like to be an artist. Yes. So it is it went went hand in hand. So, yeah. yeah. I love that, that you're like, I need to get outside of the booth and live some life and experience things in order to just be in a different setting with, yeah. where the melodies could come to you. And I know you speak a lot about like melodies are ancient, right? That's and, right. Yeah. And, and, know, you know. and that they, and that, and that, you know, I know even we'll see during the intro for tonight's show um, in your interview about the mic you know working with Michael Jackson um that it's like it's there for you to receive right like mm -hmm. you're a vessel to receive the melodies and like they're there for you um if you're if you're open to you know making yourself available to them so I want to hear a little bit more about production in your kind of definition in your own words like what is a producer right like what makes a producer a producer who can be a producer, what skill sets are required to be a producer, because I know that um, some folks on here are already in their production bag, which is awesome, heard a lot of great things, but some people might not know that they're even a producer, understand what that means. Um, good question. Yeah. She's good, right? <laughs> uh, I was literally having this conversation last night, um, I arrived here last night and also um, a little bit today uh, earlier. I have this thing where I believe at some point in time, our imagination and our peril and, and this side of the world ran parallel. Um, I think the imagination is like such a really untapped superpower mm. um and to answer your question usually i say imagination what makes a producer a great producer in my opinion is the ability is the ability to produce get what's in here and what's in here out into the physical world yep um but there's a lot of things that go with that is the journey on how you get from here to here, you know, whether it's making sure the artist is comfortable, you know, being in the place where you can be vulnerable and feel safe, you know, being in the place where you can feel like you can be yourself without being judged or mm. feeling weird about being weird, you know, you know, weird is great. You know, um, I think people who aren't afraid of their weirdness can usually get to the magic a lot quicker. Mm. Uh, but producing, man, it's, it's different. The overall general definition of that to me is being able to get the result you want in the way to where it sounds expensive and it feels it feels right to you. Um, yeah. um, you define a little, go a little bit, you know, you define it just that's such a, I can go on and on right. about producer. Is there a specific thing? I think it's, um maybe you know there i think it's like there's different ways that you can produce right like if you come at it from maybe you're a vocalist and you don't know you're a producer because you don't realize that 
even communicating with another producer about how you want things arranged or how you want um, what sounds you want to pick for a composition, et cetera, mm -hmm. is also a form of production, right? Yeah. And and I just want to maybe see if like you can like speak to some of the the expansiveness of production, but also like what it takes skill set wise and. And yeah, I think a big part of it is taking what's in here and in here and getting it out into the physical. And that's oftentimes the hardest part. Got it. But maybe talking a little bit about the many ways you can be a producer from where you are in your journey. Um, that's a really good question because when I got to Berkeley, I didn't know what that was. Right, you right. Know, uh, and when I got to Berkeley, I thought, you know, being a touring musician, mm -hmm. I was like the biggest thing you can be in the music right, business. Until right. Uh, a friend of mine asked me, hey, what is it you want to do? And I told him, just like, you know, like making beats yeah. on the keyboard, yeah. right? And he's like, well, you know, people have careers off of that, and that's yeah. not producing, right? Um, to answer your question, you don't have to be, able, you don't have to know how to play an instrument to be a producer. But a good producer knows how to put the right people together mm -hmm. to get the right end result yes you know so whether you know you quincy jones in it you know <laughs> to where you know you got to bring in a great bass player a great drum programmer which is a new age of sand drummer today yep <laughs> uh you bring in a really great vocal producer um you bring in the best songwriters but i think a producer should also understand each role yep so when you do understand each role, you can better direct each role. You may not be perfect or the best at each role, but you at least know how to communicate in the way right. to get them closer to the target. Um, one of my first experiences with the really great producers was Dr. Dre, when I really got to see, oh, so this is what a producer looks like. Right. He's not just a person that goes in and makes a beat and walks away. Yep. You know, but is he's directing, mm. you know, he's directing the room, directing the engineer, directing the musicians, yep. you know, he's stand, he's the first to get there, the last to leave, mm. you know, he's down there to the mixes from the vocal production, making sure, you know, the vocal and the song is where it needs to be, whether the lyric needs to be a little bit better, yep. the, the melody, a good producer makes sure also at the end of the day, there's a great song. You know, um, this is our job to oversee the end, you know, yeah. uh, just to have a really great song. Yeah. Hold on, that's the real question. Yeah, no, I think that, no, okay. you, you answered yeah, I in a lot farther, of ways. But, yeah. I was trying to, I know it's a broad question, yeah. and, and but I wanted to kind of get the different angles because I know you have a great story in that when you did get to Berkeley, you were like, you oh had that gosh, aha moment like, and I, that must have been like really, beautiful and liberating experience and also like you're taking a leap right um mm -hmm. but i i want to you know kind of open it up to see if other people have that aha moment for themselves as well you know writing songs is always a moving target mm -hmm. but there's also always a foundation like yes. there are building blocks on how you do get to write in a great song. Um, it's like we're trying to unpack the world in 45 minutes. I know. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you as much as I can. With songwriting, what I've learned in my experience and working with me, myself, being a songwriter and producer as well, um, I'm a always a big believer that melody is king. Mm. You know, because it's just, you know, common logic, right? All over the world, everybody understands melody, you know? That's the one language we can all agree on. Is yep. If it's a great melody, you know, it's funny when Despacito came out, you know, a lot of the, you know, anyway, I'm not gonna put myself out there, but <laughs> it's a lot of songs that I loved where I maybe didn't know all the language, but the melody was always captivating. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next part comes to, is the lyrics. Usually you find a really great, strong melody person that aren't so good at lyrics, or you find a person that's great at lyrics but aren't, this isn't so good at melody. Yeah. Um, I'm a big believer in teamwork, but if 
if a person, if you do want to be a songwriter, I would say if you do have, I know you have the heart, you wouldn't be here. Uh, <laughs> but it's loving on yourself and loving on your gift enough to nurture it. It's like, be, like lyrics are, for me, I know melody is king, but everybody wants to hear a great story, mm -hmm. you know? And, and the best stories is your story. Is as we get back to the whole, if you allow, you'd be surprised on how inter interesting you are if you are honest with yourself. And you'd be surprised how many other people would be interested. You know, if, if a person was afraid of being vulnerable, showing insecurity, insecurities, you know, your vulnerabilities, things that bother you or things that you are proud of, things that you love, I think is everything that makes us humans. I think it's when we don't want to expose that. It makes us. You ready for this one? This is this is a lyric trip for all of us lyric nerds, right? Mm -hmm. I think to be insecure, you ready for this? I think when you're insecure, insecurity, you know, it says it's a good thing. But when you add a security, you add a security, when you're trying to not be yourself, it feels weird. When you're like, when you know, like, I don't know the answers, but I'm gonna pretend like, or mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to like move around and talk like I know, it feels weird versus when you can just be yourself yep. and write the song from that perspective, you would be surprised what you look like and what you sound like on paper. And you'd be like, man, that feels good. That looks, wow. And then you put a melody, you put an unprovoking, no, a provoking melody in there uh, that comes from you. Everybody's designed with their own fingerprint. Everybody's designed with their own rhythm. And everybody has their own melody. You just have to be honest with yourself to be able to find yours. And you'd be surprised how beautiful and amazing you are when you when you find that. It's an amazing thing. So yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And I think to that kind of extending on that concept or that ideology, which I think is so important, has been like a through line in our sessions this summer. Um, how would you define your why as a creative and your kind of like purpose for creating and what drives you um and when did you have kind of that moment where you really understood what your why was when you say why why meaning why meaning your purpose for creating your kind of the message that you want to put forth i think that you kind of spoke to it is like being um being vulnerable um putting you know being authentic to yourself putting that on the page making that known and having confidence in that Oh, I um, yeah. I fixed that. Yeah, um, it, you know, what, what do you, what would you like people to kind of draw from your artistry and at, as like a as a common theme or your stamp, right? Not just from a musical perspective, but kind of the essence of who you are as an artist and how you show up in the studio. Mm. It took some time. Um, they say a good friend to give you permission to be you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be your friend today. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm giving you permission. When I say giving you permission, I'm a, I want to be an example of what it is to be yourself. And I know it sounds like, it sounds simple. It is, but you'd be surprised how much this, it's like the Miyagi effect, you know, wax on, wax off, you know, and you know, the newer Karate Kid, you know, you put your foot on the thing, right? Yeah. Um, why I do this? That's a pretty good question. Yeah. Uh, and it evolves as well. Why do I do this? That's such a loaded question. <laughs> You know, like when you plant a tree and it bears good fruit and is 
natural habitat, meaning like it don't it doesn't have to try to taste good. Like it's just it's just is. Right. I feel like and I believe when I play music, it just it kept bearing good fruit. Mm. You know, it either kept making you feel good or even when at a young age I realized even when I played an instrument, I saw how it affected other people. Or yep. It was the gift that just kept giving. And I was like, you know what? Maybe this is something I should. And it and first of all, it made me happy. It it when I didn't have words to say, I had my music. Um when I listened to music. Um, the way it just made me feel. Um, and we, I've said this before, but I've said it again, heart can take you places that your talent can't. Um, you will be amazed how I felt when I found that you could, you could get paid to do this. Because mm. I would do it for free. It's like, I didn't need nobody motivating me or telling me to play music are it's like I naturally gravitated towards it and it right. gravitated towards me. It right. called me and I answered. Um, that's a pretty deep why. Um, on a on that level, you just know when something feels right. Yes. Um, and what they say, um, what I say is a really great a really great equation for growth is when you're uncomfortable and happy at the same time mm. you know so in moments to where life could be intimidating or learning a new piece of music is intimidating yep even though i was uncomfortable i was always happy doing it with my music yeah you know and i can't say that about everything else right you know so um and it kind of speaks for it it got me here today with you all um it's my purpose and i and and i've accepted it yeah and and when i say hard take you places your talent can't there are so many people that are talented but they're not willing to i don't really want to call it work but mm -hmm. they're not willing to nurture it i love it or mm. give it the time that it needs to to blossom like you're doing you're out here you know you're nurturing your gift um, and if you're on this call you you pretty much know this is what i'm supposed to be doing um where people like or i come in hand and you come in and it's it's telling you to not give up on that you know even if it may get uncomfortable or i mean it, you may run into some situations musically or life that's intimidating. This is when your music do become your superpower and you keep going, you keep asking questions, you keep being curious, you keep growing. Um, you know, getting past this point is just really not giving up. And, and I just want to tell you, it does get better. Um, you just got to keep going. And even if you feel like, you know, everybody's had these moments where you feel like you're not good enough or, or you know, you compare yourself with other people's success. But I'm going to tell you, your own journey is the best journey. And, and stick with that. And you'd be surprised how amazing your outcome would be. Trust me, I'm really surprised, <laughs> you know. But I'm glad I stuck to my journey. I hope I answered your question. Yes, you're answering the question okay. so yeah. so eloquently. Thank you so much. Um, I do see that we have a question and I do want to give the students some time to like ask you direct questions, right? Because that's really mm -hmm. what we're here for. Um, I see that Bernarda wrote, do you think you could define or ever define a good authentic lyric? Who is that? Who is that? Where's that on? Who is that on here? Oh, I don't think that 
um, they're on the screen, but they're right here. Oh, oh wow. Oh, it, we see you. <laughs> hey, what's up? We want to be where you are. You look like you're you're somewhere beautiful. Okay. All right. Flex then. Flex <laughs> with me. Okay. I feel you. Um. So you. What's your question? Uh, yes. Uh, do you ever like? I think sometimes people question themselves if like the lyrics they write are good enough for people to hear. Uh, how can you ever like? Just go past that and go like a no or like learn like to write your lyrics your own like not just like for some other people or just like and to expose like to the world. Great question. I was literally having a lyric conversation last night. Is there's many ways of getting there, right? Um, I cover two of them. Uh, I've seen you either talking from a place where you're just a songwriter, where you're placing songs for other people to write to, or you're talking about songs that's for yourself, right? Which one is it? Songs for yourself or songs where you're writing to place on other people? A kind of to show the world and to like to be ready for what's next. Meaning, are, is these songs for you as an artist, or is this song for you to shop to another artist to sing your song? Ah, for for me. And for as you an as an artist. Hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> um, The question is, do you think that you're interesting? I think I have a lot of things to say. I believe that. Do you, do you think you're interesting as a person? I think yes. It's an absolute yes, right? Look, you're showing us the beach, the palm trees, <laughs> right? You know? Uh, <laughs> I ask you that question, it's a loaded question. I ask you that because in, you want them to get to know you, you know, and it starts with you knowing that I'm in, like, I got something to say, like, you know, the, my, in my opinion, the best, some of the best songs are, are just really great conversations. If you can have a really great conversation, which you can, right? But a conversation that goes below the surface, like you're talking about you, like, like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that, you know, this is, uh, what can I say? <laughs> I like showing my face, right? Uh, that's for that's another day. I'm about to start getting this song right now. But is, is you not being, <laughs> afraid to show people you and then having a conversation with the world with a crazy melody you know and the hook in my opinion should always be not wordy you know it should always be the payoff you know so if your hook you know was is called the beach you know what I'm saying your verses could be everything that led up to but I'll let it go with the beat. Da, 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 da. Nice. I'll, let go, I'll let it go at the beach. Da, 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 da. But your verses would be, I woke up heavy. I woke up along my mind. I woke up, da, 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 da. you know, I called the sentence on the line. Da, 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 da. And the pre-hook be, but sometimes you gotta go away. All I gotta say, I'll let it go with the beach. Da, 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 da. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And then, yeah, so that's like a secret to like, you know, you know, people's intention spans about that small. So if you say, what's the song about? So it's like the beach, on oh, the beach. So what about it? And that's your verses, right? Your verses gives all of that, you know, give it to them, you know, don't be surface, you know, 
you know, you know, like, hey. like, you know, I woke up wanting some water, you know, I, I woke up wanting some Cheerios, you know, you know, I'm not a <laughs> good person, but I'm an almond, you know, like you, you just, and people are like, ah, oh, that's dope. I can relate to that because I don't like milk. I like almond milk, you know, so I, oh, I wake up and you'd be surprised you start to create a family, you know, not fans, like a family. And they want to get to know you. And they'd be like, you know what? I'm going to go to the beach today. So then that's when you start inspiring people to find outlets on how to make themselves better, you know? So a good lyric is always, a, a sim the hook is always simple, but the verse is always, are always going to be you. Did it make sense? Thank you. Thanks. So. Okay. A songwriting yeah. message in five minutes <laughs> uh thank you for your question um i think i saw romero you raised your hand you want to ask the question yeah i want to ask um what's up writing... romero th th thanks for the thanks for the warm up um, i, I want to ask like when writing in a group i often get like nervous to pitch my ideas um especially you know when it's someone else someone else is gonna sing the song and like, because I'm scared that I might ruin their flow. Um, and I'm wondering, how do you like, how, what's the best way to be able to still have a say in what the song, what's happening to the song while still letting people have their space when you're co-writing for them? Um, it was funny. Uh, I was listening to, you know, you take bits and pieces of what people say. Uh, I was listening to Tyler Creator when he he said something interesting that he said, nobody's wrong, you know, because everybody's entitled to their opinion. Everybody's right to their opinion, right? When you when you get into writing rooms, it's a team effort, you know, it's always what's best for the song, you know, does this really elevate the song? You'd be surprised people really think about their ego more than the song, mm. you know? And I think about how many lyrics can I contribute? I've I've been in rooms where a person has had, they gave one lyric and it changed the whole dynamic of the song, right? Uh, it's just really been a good team player, you know? And, and being nervous, you know, I get it. Like I've, I've been there. Um, but I've learned, I don't know, I think you may have heard me say this in a previous um, masterclass before, mm -hmm. but me, nervousness is when you're trying to bottle up something that's supposed to be free. Mm. You know, it's like you in a room, so your gift is shaking up, but because you're tapping it, your body is reacting to it. And, you know, you yeah, it's like, let me out, let me out, you know? Uh, but when you in these rooms, man, I would just, I would approach it like, hey, now what do y'all think about this? Or um, what if we challenge this lyric, right? And if they say, um, nah, we don't think that's a good fit, it's okay, you know, is, and you gotta also know the rooms that you're in, like who you're writing with, like are these, is it a new room? You know, do I, but, if you're in the room, you're in the room for a reason. And confidence is, is confidence means a lot too. And um, I would say, always shoot your ideas out. You know, if they stick, they stick. But at least you didn't let fear or like stop you from being creative. You looked at fear in the face and you'd be like, not today, fear, not today. <laughs> this lyric will live today, right? But you just got to try it. You got to keep shooting, like throwing your darts at the target. You know, don't be nervous in the room. It's just music, you know? And usually that nervousness comes from thinking I may not be good enough or I don't, you know, I don't want to look like the person who sucks in the room, right? Get rid of all of that. It's just music. And if you can put the pressure on the gift and not on you, it'd be so much better in that room. Because now you're putting pressure on you as a person. 
versus putting it on, I need my gift to perform. I need my music to perform for me. So you do that by, you say, hey, what about jumbo shrimp? You know, they'd be like, you know what? We don't like shrimp, but we like jumbo. You know, so have fun, bro, it's music, have fun. Hope I answered your question. Okay, yeah, thanks. Right. <laughs> thanks, Romero. Um, yes, Rick, you can ask a question, and then we'll have uh, time for two more questions after that, if anyone else wants to chime in. Sure. Uh, I have this question, like, I asked this question last week to someone else, but I, I don't What's feel up, like... Rick? What's up, Hey. Hello. Uh, yeah, I asked this question last week, and uh, yeah, I don't remember who I asked it to, but I don't feel like they answered it like fully. I still have my doubts, and it's like I feel here in in Ecuador, in like my personal case, like music is built up to be like an idea of making it in music here is built up to be something kind of very, very, very merciless, unforgiving, hard thing to do. And everywhere you look, you find people that tell you that it's like striving to not like being the biggest musician ever, but just like solely making a living out of music will destroy you before you even have the slightest chance of like making some money in the industry. Like for example, I was I was listening to some like in interviews with musicians like Dave Grohl, for example, and he and he made a comment that it was like nowadays you gotta be extremely lucky to make it in music. Like you gotta be the luckiest person alive to like have a shot at music. And then there's people like Dave Mustaine from Megadeth who says that one of his most famous songs, he, uh, he had to write the bass riff to it on the brick wall of the alley he used to live in when he was homeless, sleeping on a piece of cardboard. And like, is it really that unforgiving? Are you always like predetermined to, not predetermined, but like, are you always gonna have to go down that road where you're gonna have to go, for example, the movie Rocket Man, Elton John and whatnot, like when he went to the to the record company, I think it was, and he had to endure like uh, an hour or something like that of, of the person in front of him calling his music the lowest absolute trash he's, he's ever heard and all this humiliations. Is it really that freaking hard to make it in music? Is it really that like, I have a question for you. What did you wake up and eat this morning? What did I wake up and eat this morning? I woke yeah. up and I ate like straight up Cheerios. Was it good? It was good. It was awesome. Was it almond milk? Was it whole milk? What kind of milk was it? Whole milk. Whole milk, my man, right? Before COVID-19 hit, nobody knew it, right? Yeah. Nobody... You know, life was a completely different life before COVID-19, right? But guess what? You made it. You made it this morning. You ate some Cheerios or some whole milk, and you happy. I see your, your musician's bag behind you. I, I see, you know, you got like, you know, you starting to smile on your face. I see all of that to say is, everybody's story is their own story. And I think we have so many resources and so much information. It gives people more control of creating their own narrative. If you look for the bad things, you're gonna find it for sure. But I also can tell you, if you look for the good things, it's gonna find you. So I would say, if you change your perspective, you know, Elton John's story was Elton John's story. Like these other people's story were there. My story was my story, you know, because of the decisions that I, I decided to make, you know, but now you have so much information. You have 
the ability to put out music now is more than it's ever been, ever. You know, from TikTok to Instagram to YouTube, you know, if it's real, people are going to, if it's real, people will react to it, you know. Um, I would say there's a lot of scary movies out there, you know, but I do also like funny, good, happy movies too, you know, like I would say just change your perspective. Mm. Um, put a different kind of energy out there. I would say to each his own, some people do music only to make money, you know, and I get that. And there are some people who do music because they love it. I love it because it does something for me. And when a person stops living to the expectations of other people, it makes it pretty hard. You know, when we're living, are we making music to their expectations versus I got to make myself, I got to make the best version of myself. So I like playing the bass upside down because that works for me. You know, not because I saw Jocko playing the bass this way. You know, it's like, this feels better. This is more natural. You got to first, I would say you don't have to do anything, but in my opinion, be the best version of you. Start looking at some good stories, you know. Um, write your own story. Create your own narrative. You're here right now. You ate Cheerios with almond milk, no, whole milk this morning. You're doing pretty good, man. You know, you got some, I see you got some gear in the back. There are people who don't even have gear. You know, you got a computer, you got headphones. Yeah, that's true. I need to look into more more like inspiring stories i only know like a couple and yeah like it's i i've been told about all these horrible things that can happen and maybe that's i that's, think that's, i found the reason why right now yeah i would, I would say that's them just remember you woke up this morning and ate cheerios mm -hmm. and whole milk and you're yeah. happy and right yeah, now you're happy. yeah and you can do whatever you want you can write the best song you know, you can choose to be happy. You know, it's your life, man. Make the best of it. It's music. Oh, thanks. That was, like, mind-blowing. Like, that was awesome. That was just straight up like, fire. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Rick. Um, I'm going to read one question we have in the chat, and then I'll take one more question from the videos. Easy asked at this point in time in your Jesus. life and your music career right here. Easy, who's right there? What's up? Yeah. Hey. What's up? What's up? What's up? New York, huh? I'm from Boston, but you know I like the New York culture. Okay, okay, <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> What's your question? Oh, let me read it. Uh... At this point in time in your life and your music career, what sounds are you looking for? That's the first question. I don't know if you want to start off with that. Then what I can sounds, read the second one. When you say sounds, what do you mean sound? Like sounds in pitch. Like, I don't know, like sounds that you want to bring to the industry or uh, bring back freedom, to the man. industry. That, that, that sound is freedom. You know when you hear music and it's just like, yo, I've never heard nothing like that. Like, what is so different? I remember when I was, when I first in my, heard MIA for the first time, I was like, what is this? And she did it all in her bedroom. You know? Or when people listen to Billie Eilish, just like, it's her story. It's like, you know, it's like people are like, man, I didn't know people felt like that. Or, mm. you know, it's, what is your thing? You know, you, you can be like, hey, man, I'm from Boston, but I love, you know, New York. It's like, what is that? <laughs> you know, freedom is the sound I'm always looking for, you know, and those are always the coolest sounds because that tells me that person isn't scared to be themselves. Respect. And I want to know that person. Yeah, that's that's it right there. And what would you? My second question is, 
And what was the biggest gift given to you that allowed you to give many other gifts out to the, to others? You ready for this one? This is okay. Yes, sir. Ready for being, all right. Okay, everybody on this call, if you can, close your eyes. I'm looking, close your eyes. Close your eyes, I'm looking. Tommy, I'm looking at you. Ronald, I'm looking at you. Close your eyes. And even those who ain't showing their faces, close your eyes. All right, open them, open them, open them. The biggest gift that I keep getting is I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning with another opportunity to do it again. Like, and that's the biggest gift because life, it holds music, it holds things that I love, it holds decisions, it holds choices that I make, you know? It's the ground floor of it all. It's like your life. And I believe if people got back down to the basics, it's like, yo, I'm alive again. Am I gonna waste this time? I'm like, am I gonna waste this borrowed time that we have? Or am I gonna make take today and be unapologetic? Like my friend Rick. I would have ate 10 bowls of Cheerios, not 10 bowls of Cheerios, way too, that's too much, you know, you know, easy, right? They call you easy, right? You know, like, if you want to go to the beach today, bro, and you're like, oh, I mean, man, go to the beach, do it, follow through. You'd be surprised the song that you will find on that journey. You would be surprised the sound that you will find on that journey. You may be like, man, I want to go to New York. I just want to ride to New York at night just to see the lights and drive back to Boston, right? Do it. Live your life unapologetically. Like, be inspired. Life is precious. Life is gorgeous. Life is every. It's your music. Your music is your life. The studio is just a place where you, you release it, mm -hmm. but you go back out yeah. and, and you live unapologetically. You know, forgiving, letting go, facing yourself, writing it down. What does that feel like? You know, so that's to me would be the greatest gift for me. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. My man. <laughs> okay, so I know that some of y'all are heading to class and I know we have a couple more questions um which you can feel free to drop in the chat and um we'll answer one more but before we answer our last question i just want to let everybody know and just remind them that um even though that that all of the attendees including you guys as performers tonight have to be masked um when you enter the facility um yes as as uh, demonstrated here so just make sure that you bring that with you i know there's a no mask mandate in massachusetts but we are making sure everyone's safe in the bpc as we celebrate you all and get down and, and enjoy the music so that's the last thing and oh mile i'll ask your question is there a correct way of making music no no, it's, it's like saying, is there a correct way to live life? Is mm -hmm. you are the decisions that you make. You are what you think. You are the choices that you make. You know, whether that's good or bad, that's, that's really on about what you believe, what you think, what you believe is right or wrong. Um, music will always be a reflection of you, you know? And that comes in so many different layers. So there's no correct right or wrong way because whoever wrote the, well the two ladies who wrote the song happy birthday they wasn't thinking about you know uh when the beatles wrote their a minute and 30 second songs or when etta james wrote at last and the hook was throughout the entire song you know when she said you're a dream that i can speak to 
who writes a lyric like that? So to answer your question, there is no correct way. It's my opinion. Such a loaded question. <laughs> next time, we'll finish that question next time. Thank you. Oh, as who's Millie? How you say your name? It's Millie. Millie. Oh, Millie. Millie. Hey. <laughs> um, good question, though. Great question. Thank you. All right. I think that's our time for now. Um, on top of all the, the different hats that Nephew wears, he is also a Berkeley City Music Ambassador. So I do not think this will be the last time that y'all get to see him. Um, we have a lot of really exciting things rolling out the rest of this year, which we'll keep you all updated on as you go back into the world and create your own music. And I hope you step away from this conversation feeling empowered to do so and step into your power and, and who you are authentically. Step into your power. Ooh, step I like that. Ooh, I like um, that. So I like that. Go chase that uncomfortable Bars. and happy mixture, which is growth. And we will see you at the concert tonight. Thank you so much for Tuesday meetings. You guys, you guys have really made this uh, an awesome series throughout the summer. So yeah, if you have any questions, we'll be here um, via email. But otherwise, <clears throat> we will see you at the concert tonight. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. It was awesome. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, y'all.